Hello, you all. I am Black Witch Yaya. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. Today, we have the honor of talking about the voodoo queen herself, Marie Laveau. Now, just a fun fact that I actually wanted to film this video prior to it being high in demand and recommended by a lot of you guys. I wanted to film it in New Orleans just so I can get a feel of what was going on during that time. Maybe get a tour to really make this video dynamic. But unfortunately, due to everything going on, I'm filming this right at home. Oh, even though I'm not in New Orleans, but we could bring New Orleans to Orlando, baby. <laughs> so let's get into the story of Marie Laveau. Also, you guys, I know you see this microphone in the video version of this just because I'm testing it out for my podcast. I want to make sure this bad boy works. So I hope it's not too distracting in this video, but just know a podcast version of this video will be available as well. So let's get into the story of Marie Laveau. Marie Laveau was born on September 10th and the date isn't exact. It was either between 1779 and 1881. The actual documentation and the birth certificate is not available. So many researchers just took on the guesstimation of it was between 1779 and 1881. So I don't want to focus too much into Marie Laveau's early life just because due to lack of documentation, a lot of numbers and dates kind of contradict itself. And I really want to focus on her adult life and how she earned the title as Voodoo Queen because that's the part we all really came for. So since we are talking about healers, the crystal of the day is the Aragonite, one of the many crystals to combat stress and anger. The Aragonite is a grounding crystal and an earth healer stone. Use this crystal to remove blockages and to prepare for meditation or spiritual work. And you can get your jumbo aragonite from blackwitchyaya.com. Like for example, with the number of kids, some say she has zero kids. Some sources say she has 14 kids and other sources say that she has seven kids, but only two survived. But just know there are two kids involved and there was a second Marie Laveau, but we're going to focus on Marie Laveau the first. So after the father of Marie Laveau's children did pass away, she became a hairdresser using the skills she learned from her mother and grandmother to generate revenue for her family. And of course, even back then, the hairdresser setting, you're getting all the gossip, you're talking about who you know and what you know. And this tea was really good because most of her clientele consisted of the servants of the wealthy white families in the French Quarter. So, you know, she was getting all the news on who was doing what, who's this, what little, little bit did what miss sarah did and all of that good stuff and this innocent setting it seems common for us women was the main reason why her power was questioned but we'll get into that later on in the video and when i say power i'm talking about in the field of voodoo now just for a quick voodoo breakdown Voodoo translates to the word spirit or deity, and it was introduced to the states during the transatlantic slave trade and brought about in New Orleans for this story where it was reinforced and strengthened by both the free and the enslaved Africans. But you would think in New Orleans, voodoo would be much more accepted and it was, but just like today, voodoo was still frowned upon by, you know, those individuals who did not seem to understand it and demonized it and wanted them to practice what they practiced so they could all feel safe. But that did not stop the people from practicing what they knew and what they were most familiar with, which was voodoo. After the death of her mother, this was when Marie was inspired to dive deeper into the African spirituality and practice of voodoo. All of her clients admire her hard root work, tarot readings, charms, spell work, and most popular, Grigri amulets or bags crafted by her to provide protection and luck to the owner. Marie was even influential just by the way she walked, talked, danced with her snake named Le Gonzombe. Even police were scared to confront her because they didn't know what would happen. Now, with Marie Laveau being known for her root work, spell work, tarot readings, and all that good stuff, there's one story that really shocked people and proved how powerful she actually was. So, there was a wealthy man in the French Quarter whose son was on trial for murder. Now, this case was not looking good. He was basically found guilty before he even stepped into the courtroom, and the odds were not in his favor. So with him being worried and concerned about his son, he knew of this voodoo lady that everyone kept talking about, Marie Laveau, 
and decided to go to her for counsel. So one night he snuck over to Marie Laveau's home. He made sure no one saw him because God forbid if they see a white man going to a black voodoo lady for help instead of going to the church and praying, but he knew he needed answers and he needed something to happen fast because his son's court date was approaching soon. So the father of the son who was on trial let Marie Laveau know what was going on and how bad he needed help and how things weren't looking good. He was so desperate that he told Marie Laveau, listen, if you can make sure my son remains free, I will reward you with a home. So of course, Marie Laveau got to work. So she spent weeks and weeks praying at St. Louis Church. Yes, a church, a Catholic church. She was so powerful that they let her do her ceremonies and rituals inside the church because as I mentioned before, she mixed her Catholic teachings and religious beliefs with her work for voodoo as well, which really made her craft powerful and creative and different from other people, making her more popular. Also, it is told that in New Orleans, Roman Catholic practices were mixed with voodoo as well. So during these ceremonies and rituals, she went through self-torture to appeal and plead with the spirits through the use of guinea peppers, placing three in her mouth and keep them there for hours. So the morning of the trial, she snuck into the courtroom, placing the three guinea peppers that she used during the ritual underneath the judge's chair. And then the next thing you know, the son walks into trial, looking guilty, facing a lot of time in jail, but yet he walked out a free man. So his father kept his promise to Marie Laveau and rewarded her with a house. Now this is what really shocked everyone because during this case, everyone thought the son was guilty. Everybody knew he did it or they thought he did it. All roads was leading to him going straight to jail, but due to Marie Laveau's power, she was able to make sure that he remained a free man. Now let's get back into the hairdresser situation I was telling you guys about because many people like to use this access she had to the service and the wealthy families as to the reason why the man was set free and all of her other spell work and readings worked as well. Many people thought, oh, she's a hairdresser. She listens to gossip all the time. She's not psychic. She's just using what she learned from doing hair. She just takes the gossip and applies it to spell work. And I honestly feel like this was just a certain group of people who were trying to discredit her powers because, again, it was demonized. Because I just make sense of it like there's no way she knew every single person in New Orleans in order for all of her rituals and ceremonies just to be based off of hair salon talk. Many people tend to ignore the fact that Marie Laveau really helped out her community as well beyond spell work. She did charity work. She helped those who could not help themselves. Many people believe she did have 14 children at one time because she took on others as her children as well, which is why the exact number isn't sure because they always seen her helping out others. So this is the end of the first part of the story of Marie Laveau. When I go to New Orleans, I promise you I'll have so much more information. But thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. Let me know what you think about Marie Laveau down below. What did you hear about her? What parts did I skip? Are you in New Orleans and you have more information? But like I always say, as above, so below. As within, so without. As the universe, so the soul. Until next time, you guys, I say, baby.